What up, what up? I know you've been waiting for uh, another one of these wonderful webcasts here. Um, i got to remember what I'm doing. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so there's some kids playing outside my house when I got home, and hopefully they're still not out here <laughs> listening to this. But um, got some disturbing news to tell you, and then some, uh, let's just say, a warning at the end. So the disturbing news is the following. You won't believe this happened tonight. I was at the volleyball game. Shout out to the sophomore volleyball team for spiking the ball good and getting a win tonight. So I'm sitting on the scorer's table, and I see to my left one of my students walk into the gymnasium during the sophomore game. And I thought, as the student entered the stands, that they may like waved to me and you will not believe that the entire time he was there. Oh, I wasn't going to mention, I guess I've narrowed it down to a guy. The entire time he was there, he did not wave to me from across the gym. I was insulted, but I got over it. Um, life goes on. Anyways, political culture. Uh, we won't spend a tremendous amount of time. I think this might be the fastest one of the semester. Again, the political culture is a widely shared beliefs, values, um, the norms that we have in regards to our democracy in the United States, the role of our government, the freedoms that we have that are, uh, again, change over time. Our political culture is constantly changing. And the relationship between citizens, the government, and the, the role that the government plays um, does change over time. And we'll certainly talk about that from a political ideology standpoint. Some of the characteristics of our political culture, certainly we talked about liberty, this idea that uh, in our society we are free, um, we have free thought, we have free speech. Um, there are so many freedoms that we have. That sometimes we take them for granted. Um, but liberty uh, goes hand in hand with freedom. Um, and then it ties into individualism, that you can be an individual in our society and really um, express yourselves, whereas in some other societies and some other countries, you do not have that ability. Um, at the same time, even though we consider ourselves individuals, um, we, we oftentimes ask the government for assistance. And certainly there are groups of people um, that ask for more assistance than others. Um, but again, another hallmark of our society is um, this idea that we help citizens who may struggle. Do we always do a good job of it? No. We have a uh, belief of equality in our system that for the most part, um, Americans have equality of opportunity. That if you wanna be successful in our society, in, in our country, uh, you have that ability. And uh, in some societies that isn't the case. And in, certainly in some countries that isn't the case. But again, uh, we have equality of opportunity um, political equality mean, you know, there's fairness in regards to the process of running for office, albeit certainly some people are at advantage over others. We call um, those concepts political capital. So who you know um, politically can certainly play a role in regards to your success and certainly running at the national level for office. Um, again, this idea that the American dream uh, is always there and it sounds real cheesy um, but I think a lot of people realize that we have many opportunities that we shouldn't take for granted. Again, you have this balance in society between liberty um, and equality and just how far the government will play in that role. And certainly when we talk about ideology, we'll talk about that. And I do want to emphasize again that economic equality is not a hallmark of our society, meaning people, unfortunately, maybe are not born with the same opportunities from an economic standpoint. Um, we certainly, uh, capitalism, the concept of capitalism, the free market, um, allows for certain individuals to have advantages. It is what it is, um, but capitalism is a hallmark of our society. Socialism, the idea that the government will play a role in some economic aspects, um, is in place. We are not a, I mean, we sometimes don't want to use the term socialist, um, but the government does play a huge role in regulating a lot of things in our economy. And we talked about that last unit in regards to the Commerce Clause and the federal government. 
Um, we talk about that from a federalism standpoint with certain states playing different roles. The idea that welfare um, for citizens who are struggling varies state by state. That's a, the beauty of our federalist system. Um, let's see here. Certainly we talk about, you know, in, in history, you're gonna talk about these things uh, next year in US history. And it's really not a history course, AP government, but just understand that over time, certainly in the 20th century, the government has played a uh, increased role in our economy. Um, as opposed to uh, 19th century or early 20th century. We are a democracy, which means rule by the people. Uh, the people will choose leaders. We are in direct democracy, will choose leaders. <laughs> oh, uh, Donald Trump just showed up on the television screen. I'm watching uh, Fox News in the background, always fair and balanced. Uh, civic duty, this idea that in our society, citizens are very active um, civically in our communities, et cetera. And a lot of you do things in our communities, uh, in the community of Elmhurst and the community of York High School um, that illustrate uh, our idea of being civically active. And the speaker we have on Constitution Day Thursday certainly will be an example of that as well. One thing I want to emphasize is we've had an increased de distrust in government uh, in the late 20th century and, of course, over the last 14 years. Um, that started with the Vietnam War. Uh, it's continued with Watergate and the scandals with the Nixon administration. Uh, and it continued with our constant um, skirmishes, if you will, in the Middle East over the last 20, 30 years. Um, and this idea that we don't always trust politicians as much as we used to. And there's increased scrutiny of political actions. Certainly, you look at the Hillary Clinton, um, Benghazi, um, you look at the Hillary Clinton email scandal, you look at George W. Bush uh, with the war in Iraq after 9-11. We've had an increase in this, you know, skepticism of what the government is doing, especially at the federal level. And we see the conflicts between Republicans and Democrats today in politics uh, that increases. Political efficacy um, is the idea that you can have an effect efficacy and effect on the political process. Some people lack political efficacy. They don't feel that they can have a direct effect on the political process. Um, and that's unfortunate because it usually leads to inaction in regards to voting, um, not playing a role in the political process. I would hope that during a presidential primary season like we're going to have over the next six months, that people feel that they, they can have a direct effect, at least in this case, in the selection of a president. Um, internal political efficacy is the idea uh, that people have internally in their brain, in their mind, um, a high level of knowledge over politics and the political process. Some people have a high level in internal political efficacy. Some people have kind of a low level, don't really understand the process or know a lot about the candidates and how the government works. External political efficacy is the idea that you can have an impact by usually voting or campaigning or being a member of an interest group, uh, have a role in the changing of public policy, the passing of laws, um, and electing officials. One of the hallmarks, again, of our society is there's tolerance. In our society, in our democracy, in our political culture, we have tremendous toler tolerance over uh, different beliefs. And you see some politicians have low level of tolerance and others have more. Um, I think the higher level of political tolerance we have the more cooperation we have between parties and the more productive our government is. Clearly over the last, I would say 10 years, that tolerance level has decreased at least with elected officials at the federal level. We're pragmatic, meaning we're less ideological than some countries and we're more practical. Um, I, I would say that sometimes you could argue that we're not very, uh, we're becoming more ideological, meaning we're more conservative, more liberal, and that's leading to less things being done and more co or less cooperation between the parties. I think you see that a little bit today. Finally, justice, this idea uh, that in our society, there's this belief that if we're wronged by the government or by another person, that there is an avenue to alleviate that. And our justice system provides that, whether it be the police, the courts, the Supreme Court, et cetera. Individuals who thought their marriage rights were being violated uh, won this summer, certainly, in regards to the gay marriage decision. So I guess I'm not going to tell you that it's secret, but I'll tell you in class tomorrow. Peace!